Hi guys, <clears throat> I put a thing up on the Facebook the other day <clears throat> saying that uh, loads of people were asking me about picking disc detainer locks and I said um, I could do an idiot's guide. Me being the idiot, trying to guide a few of you guys into uh, new guys into picking. Um, DD locks and everyone said, oh yeah, I had a lot of things saying it'd be a great idea, why didn't you do it? So I thought I'd give it a bash. Bearing in mind, I've been trying to pick DD locks for about a year and a half, and literally only in the last four months have I got my head around it and decided exactly how it works and uh, been quite successful picking them. So I thought we'd start with the locks. Um, so this is the sort of thing that you, uh, I haven't got a key for it, but I have, I just don't know where it is. Um, so you know, anything that says top security or extra security, it's going to be Chinese. Um, to be honest, most of them aren't very good quality. Um, the locks are poor, the tolerances are poor, and quite often the discs are quite grindy. Um, also these, totally useless, it's fine to see how a disc lock works. Um, Got a key, it's not the right key for this lock, but you can see it's got this in there, they're all lined up. But as we try and open the lock, they clearly don't go into the right place. And basically, all you've got to do is get them in the right place and open it. Simples! <laughs> I literally don't rate these, they don't pick very well. Um, the space between the discs is terrible. I mean, they're just they're great to sort of look, have a look at it and say, yeah, this is how it works, but I mean, I don't know what you'd pick it with, because none of my pick tips, would, I mean, it just falls between all the discs, between the spacers, I mean, it's just hopeless. So we get rid of that, and you get onto the better ones. These are also Chinese. Uh, this is a, a UK brand, I think, Silverline, but again, it's top security, made in China, but it's a better lot. Oh, we zoomed in here, aren't we? That's better. It's a better lock. Um, the tolerance is slightly better, and it's not gritty and horrible inside. Likewise, this. Yeah, I, Blue Spot, I thought was a German company. Um, it might well be, but the locks are still made in China. Um, same thing, good tolerances. Tough pick, actually, this is. Um, as this is a sort of beginner's guide, we're not really gonna go much further than the kryptonites. Um, this is a keeper. I don't have a pick here to pick this. It's a long way down inside. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, wrong way. But it's a long straight. Oh, let's just straighten the discs up. It's an awful long way down there to get to that second disc because this first one is a spinner. And it doesn't do anything apart from spin round and round and round. So you've got attention off the second disc. Now, all of these can be front tensioned. And when you're starting off doing this, front tension is what you got. You don't really wanna be going around trying to pick rear tension, it's difficult. <laughs> and you need a specialized pick to do that. Um, most of these actually can be rear tension too, because they have a zero cut at the bottom of the disc pack. We're calling this the top and this the bottom. It's probably not that way, but when you're picking it, you know, I start down there, which I call the bottom. Um, they nearly all have a zero cut. And if I actually had a lock with a key, I could show you where is uh, so there we go. This is not a trading lock. <laughs> You, please, you do not want to be picking one of these first. This tends ten of a random disc in the center. But these are the cuts on your discs. Let's just zoom that in a bit. Oh, I have a bit. God, Jesus. These are your cuts. So that's uh, disc one. That's probably two discs in there because you can see how thin the zero cut one is, which you can see is there. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but can you see it? It's just shiny, just there. So that means that bottom one is a zero cut. 
So the zero cuts in here are there and there. I need a pointer. So the zero cuts on this one are there and there. All these are other cuts. So uh, that looks like a two cut. They look both look like four, four cuts. That's a five cut. That's a one cut. Now, I don't think that tensions off that disc. So if I got the lock, let's have a see. No, there's a massive butterfly disc in the front there that just, just like the other lock, just spins round and round and round. So a big fat spinner. So you'd have to go through there and tension off this too. Or be very clever and try and tension off the uh, zero cut disc, which is right down the bottom there. But anyway, far too difficult to start with. Leave them well alone. That's the Abus Plus core. And I'll just show you, then we get up to the really, really silly stuff. Uh, this is an abloy. That's the key there. Keyway. Again, you need a special pick for that. So, you know, you're not going to start picking these. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you're not going to end up picking them either. Um, let me go to the really crazy stuff. Like this. <laughs> this is like a Russian double abloy. Um, two keys, key retaining. So you'd have to pick one, leave your pick in, and pick two with another pick. I'm not going to pick that just yet. I'm going to play with it. Um, and then you get things like this, disc locks. Um, I don't know what make this is. It's a tough pick, I can tell you that, I've picked it. I mean, this isn't a picking video, so we're not actually gonna be doing picking, but um, it's a little bit sticky, there we go. Um, this is just a sort of a how-to pick. If you wanna see locks being picked, check out a few of my videos. There's a few of them on there in the last four months where I've been picking them. So, not knocked everything over. So it's a very similar disc lock. This is a kryptonite one. Again, I probably have a key for it, but I just don't know where. No, no. It's fairly irrelevant. Um, all were the same. None of this, the Chinese stuff, kryptonites, no false gates. Um, and they will all tension from the top. Again, this one has a butterfly disc in, by the look of it. So yes, yeah, a spinner just goes round and round and round. So you'd have to put your pick through there to tension off the second disc. And that's it, where you pick up tension. Um, that also means that you may have to rotate the second disc round, and even the spinner round, if the spinner's got a gate in it. But on a kryptonite, I wouldn't have thought so. Okay, so the basics are Inside the lock, you've got any, these locks, you've got anywhere between one and usually seven discs. When you get up to the, uh, the sort of uh, Abus, they've got a few more, and the Abloys, I think, have nine. And then you've got things like uh, this, which is an anchor lass, and that's got 11. Still haven't picked that yet. Above my pay grade. Um, again, you've got D-locks, this is Neighbours Plus, I've picked that. Get the standard kryptonite D-locks, no false gates, tension from the top, long way down in the core for that one there. So anyway, they've all got discs inside, and the idea is, this is what this looks like. This is a big one I just 3D printed. They're obviously not really this big, because... <laughs> um, this is a stop, so you get about 90 degrees of rotation, just over. Um, all the discs and the idea is to get that gate there underneath the sidebar so the sidebar can drop in. Have I got a little sidebar here? There we go. So when you start we turn everything to the right so the sidebar will be like this. You see that? Then we rotate the disc back round until bang it drops in. Now, sometimes it drops in with a click. Sometimes it just fall, goes loose as you're going in. You know, you're binding all the way around now. Binding, 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 drop, and it goes loose. That's usually when you slip off the disc. Don't be worried about that. That's fine. Just 
pick the disc back up and then see if you've got the sidebar will not drop right into the bottom like this because you're going to have not until the last disc because you're going to have other discs that are still holding up like that so once it gets there you're going to get play here and you're going to pick that up in your pick tip so you're going to have more play when it drops into a gate than when you're doing there so your pick tip sits in here and you're going to get a little bit of play in there anyway when you turn it side to side so you, your pick tip will be in there like that and you'll get a little bit of play like that but once it drops into the gate you'll get more play and also you'll be able to move it side to side without any binding or any friction if it's on top of here you'll have friction so that won't work um, that's a disc with a false gate in it they're false gates not that you need to worry about those because none of the cheap chinese ones have them um, once you've dropped your little thing in there the bar in there the side bar it still binds on there because it's nowhere near as deep as this so you'll still get friction you get a little bit of play but not as much play as you do in here and that's how you know it's in a false gate but that's something to learn later on okay picks i guess like everybody i wanted to pick dd locks so i went online and i bought this four quid and honestly it's a piece of junk i mean look at this how are you supposed to pick with anything like that i mean it's just a joke you have to get it in here somewhere before it starts to bind this is just terrible these picks it isn't long enough and this thing on the end is oh, gone the wrong way again this thing is just a great big lump of brass i think I mean, it's just, I literally no idea how anybody would ever pick something with this. When you've got these discs in your disc pack, like this. So, oh, those gates line up as well. When you've got them in the disc pack like this, and your picking tip comes in, I'll start at the bottom. And you go up and you pick this disc, so you turn that around to whatever, you pick that. Once you've got this into the gate, or not a gate, whatever, you need to be able to pull your pick tip back between the two discs. There is a spacer. Uh, the spacer is usually about anywhere between 1.8 and, sorry, 0.8 and 1 mil. So you need to be able to get your pick tip between that so that you can rotate it back round to pick up the next disc. Just uh, zoom that in so you see what I mean. So you go in, you pick the bottom disc. Once you've got that, around here, you put, your pick tip goes in between the discs so you can rotate it back round, pick up the next one. I'll show you it in a lock in a minute. If you can't get your pick tip between the discs, what you're going to end up doing is doing that. You're going to have two discs turning together. So you're never going to know if one's dropping in the gate or not. It's, I mean. In fact, probably the only thing you could pick with this pick is probably this, <laughs> because there's such a huge gap between all of these things. I mean, just to give you an idea, um, so this pick tip yields two mil. Just over two mil, 2.1. The gap between the discs is 0.8 to one mil max. So that ain't going between them. Not the end of the world, because I bought two of these. Um, this one's slightly better. I shortened the picking um, rod so that it didn't actually fall out the end like this one does. This flops around, I mean, it's terrible. And uh, a very good friend of mine, John Eggerton made me that tip. This was before I started making my own. And this one is point six mil. So no problem getting that through the point eight mil gap or the one mil gap. So you can put your pick in, you can pick your disc, you can put it back, you can rotate back around, pick up the next disc, do the same. So these are fixable 
Um, I think my one of my earliest videos, I did use this to pick something. It was the only thing I've ever picked with it, by the way. But people do use them. I'm not one of them. I thought if I'm going to try and pick this, I'm going to try and buy something a little bit better. So I got the Sparrows pick, which is a much better setup pick. Got longer prongs, which will reach down into locks. It's adjustable, so you can pull the end out. If you've got to get right down into a keyway, it doesn't help if you've got to get through uh, like a spinning disc or a spacer disc at the top. Sometimes it's just not long enough to tension. I'll just show you an example of what I mean. Uh, which one? Maybe this ain't this. So, put your pick and tip in, and it doesn't matter what I do with that, I cannot pick up any tension. And that's purely and simply because it's caught in the first spacer disc, and, oh, as you can see, let's see if I can zoom in and just show you how fat that spacer disc is. So I can turn that space of this, but look how wide that is. I reckon that's about four mil, three and a half to four mil that top disc. So there's no way that that spiral pick will pick that up. However, it is lovely. It has, um, I actually don't know how wide the picking tip is, to be totally honest. I've used this a lot. I've never had any problems with it. So I have a 0.6. So again, that's fine. That slip between the discs. Um, and for this, I struggled. I made some bits for it, which I'll show you in a minute. There's plenty more of this type of pick on the market. Um, just open this box. This is uh, one made by uh, RWB Custom Picks. Same thing. Um, difference is this is all made of stainless this is made of some sort of alley cast nothing wrong with it works fine you know not a problem but it's not as nice as this it has got more markings on which maybe for starting to pick you might use a lot more of these um, yeah. so you have lines these don't always line up with the disc, but it does give you a guide of where you are. And so this line here lines up with my pick tip. So if I put it in a lock and it's like that, and this is how much movement I get normally just in the disc. And if I get in a gate, maybe the movement's like this, you can tell straight away. But after the first few you've picked, it's all done by feel. Um, this one, it's not assembled at the moment, but this spacer goes on over the top of here, just bolts down, you know, tension it with this, opposed to the arms on this. I actually prefer this round one, um, and in the picks I've made, I like them round, because wherever I put it in the lock, you'll see when I put the spars in the lock, it's not always in an ideal place. Um, but this you can take from anywhere, it's great. Uh, you also have the arms if you like that. I don't. And then if you really, really want to go crazy, you pick all sorts of nutty locks. There's this. <laughs> this is the silver bullet made by um, Huxley Pig. Uh, it's not only front tension, it's rear tension, it's mid tension. Um, it does everything really. Um, this is an abloy tip, which I've yet to conquer. I also can't get out of here. So that's a picking tip for picking the, the abloy lock. That one I showed you earlier on. This type. Just pop that back in there. And then you have a standard tensioner dip, uh, tip, uh, 
this one a minute, I've got rear tensioner tip. Camera more is trying to pick with it, but uh, you can literally have lots of variations of all sorts of stuff in here. And you can have two tips if you want. Very clever. Chuck it back in now. But to be honest, it's a lot of money to just uh, learn to pick. These detainer locks, that's for your more serious picker. And looks like me, that just like shiny stuff. Um, I think that was about 550 quid, I think. So, a lot of money. Well, I think the Sparrows one is about 40. I think uh, RWB's is about 125. Um, so, pay whatever you like. Get whatever you like. As long as you can open locks with it, it's all good. Right, picking. Mm, what have we got? Okay, so techniques to picking. There's about three rules you need to remember. After that, it's practice. So get something in here. This is just a tensioner from a dimple set or something. I don't know. I'd also use these, which I 3D print. Rotate all your discs around. Now, when I bought this pick, I had it for about three months and it was gonna go in the bin because I could pick nothing with it. And I mean nothing. Um, my biggest problem was, I put it in the lock, tensioned off the top disc. And, no, nope, wrong way. Jesus, this happens just flops all over the place. I can't keep it straight. And I literally could, could, I just couldn't keep it straight. The golden rule of picking these is you've got to be able to traverse the whole of the disc pack. When I say that, I mean, pick tip stuck in there, that's clever. <laughs> Do that with the spiral, look, they go the wrong way around, and then you can't turn it. So you pick up your discs, and you've got to be able to traverse the whole disc pack. Well, I actually can't get that in. Okay. And it's because this isn't straight. If you hold it upright and try and do it, then I can, I can get it in. There we go. There it is. Once I start picking, it starts falling over. Then all of a sudden, I can't bloody do it. Really peed me off. So what I did, well, why is it moving all over the place? And it's because I've got this doing this. If that was sat down on there, which you can clearly see it won't. And even if it did, I'm picking up two discs there. So that wouldn't be any good. So it needed something to just space it out. So, I messed that up now. I 3D printed these things. I don't know whether this one's the right size. So it's just a 3D printed flat spacer. I printed them in all sorts of shapes. And I printed ones that click on to the front of the disc. But to be honest, I found the rare ones best just because they fit in my Sparrow's case. <laughs> We've got six of them in there from one and a half mil up to four mil in half mil increments. And what this does is you get the right spacer by putting one on, bit of a guesstimate to start with. You set everything to the right, you line your pick tip up, you hold it, you put it in, make sure it's all flush, turn everything to the left and take it all out. And you look down there, and see how many discs you've picked up. Nope. And I, as you can see, I've picked up two. So, it's either not the right spacer, or I just need to crank this back in here a bit, because they are adjustable. Nope, it's all the way back in. So, we look for a slightly bigger spacer. It's a bit of a faff around to get this on. So again, rotate everything round to the right. Put it in. Rotate left, pull out. I've got one. Now that was just catching that. And I mean just catching that. So what you can do, is, just 
loosen it off, pop that out a little tiny bit, not too much. Ooh. Once you've got it set up, you've got it set up. It's getting it set up. <laughs> so, everything went to the right, to the left. Got two. So I pushed, I pulled it out too far. Try rotating it all around. This is what I mean about an idiot's guide. Nobody said I was any good at it. <laughs> Just trying to impart what little I've learned. That's not enough. Which isn't a massive amount, but people want to know, apparently. There we go. Picked up one disc. So, I now have got... I could put that in, just rotate that back around. So we've now got... What? Oh, still not quite enough, is it? I just need to go a tiny bit more. Ah, come on out. Yeah, just once, that's perfect. So it's a bit of a faff setting it up, but once you've done it and got it done, it's fine. So you've now got your disc, they're all rotated around to the right. Your pick is solid, it's not going anywhere. And then hopefully you can traverse up and down. If I had my picking straight, up and down, no problem. So, the next thing is, I can't remember to rotate them all around or not. I didn't, I can see that. I always start at the bottom top tensioning so I want to start as far away from my pick as I can a lot of people start at the top it's a personal preference I think but what I do this is in line with my pick tip Ooh. Oh, Jesus. so this one is in line with my pick tip this one line here oh God damn, I'm still not quite far enough out I'm not picking this it doesn't matter so that line is the center line and that lines up all the discs so i know that every time i'm going to need to come back to that line to pick up the next disc so so what i do is i go right the way down the bottom just going to zoom that out a little bit i go right the way down the bottom i turn it 90 degrees and i pull it up so that's resting on the bottom disc now i just slowly turn whilst just putting it back a little bit. What you do not want to do is shoot right up through the core. So there we go. If you shoot right the way up through the whole disc pack, you're not going to know where you are. So it's easy to do. Oh, you're up here, you've lost it, which is fine on the bottom one. But if you're halfway through, you've not got a clue. So just up to the disc, wait till it comes up. Right, so then you're on the first disc there, or the bottom disc, call it what you will. So I'm not using masses of tension, so you would set that disc, then pull it up till you get into the space between the discs, pull that back towards you slightly, and then just go up until you go in, you're on the next disc. Set that back into the space, pull it up against the disc. When you get the hang of picking it, you won't need to do that all the time. But when I started, I literally kept getting lost and I would be picking away. And then all of a sudden, you know, a disc that I, a lot that I knew had seven discs and only had five and I'd missed them out. And that was the way that helped me sort of keep aligned to where my discs are. So we're gonna go, we haven't picked anything here. So I'm gonna go back to the bottom. So I'm gonna pick up that bottom disc. And I'm gonna, all right, so I've got quite a bit of movement on that disc. Now, I think that's in a gate. To check it, I'm gonna rotate it around. It is binding heavy. Doesn't wanna come out of there, so I'm sure that's a gate. 
Now I'm rotating it slowly, I'm not whipping it round, and it's binding all the way around, all the way. Nothing's fallen in, so I'm gonna put it back. Don't be worried about putting it back. And as I put it back, I felt a little bit of movement on this, so I know that is in a gate. So, up. Well, I haven't rotated anything, have I, because that is a zero cut disc. So we'll go up to the next one, which is there. And we'll do the same thing. There's no, there's nowhere near as much movement in there. So I'm guessing that isn't in the gate. Oh, and it just clicks straight in. Now look at that, that's in a gate, huge. Huge gate. So then you just put it straight up into the next one. Because you've rotated that disc, you're gonna hit into the bottom of the disc as long as you come straight up, and you're gonna find the next one. Which is there. Now just turn that, and that's gone loose. So that is in a gate. So come to the next one. That feels like it's in a gate already, because it's quite wide. So we'll turn it, come up to the next one. That does not feel like it's in a gate, so we'll rotate that. Now it does. Now just because it feels like it's in a gate now, doesn't mean when you get to the end of the lock, they're all gonna be in gates, and it pays to go back and check them. I'm not sure about that one. No, click, I do we hear that? Click, that clicked. Some binding heavy. Click. It don't all click, don't get me wrong, they're not all gonna jump in and say, oh, I'm in a gate, this is what it looks like, but look how big that movement is. That's how it looks like it's in a gate. That, pretty much, is how you pick them. I'm at the top of the lot now, so. Quite happy to go back through and check them. That they're in gates, not in gates, it's all good. It's not a picking video, I haven't really been concentrating. But I don't think we need to pop it open, but it should all be good. Right down to the bottom. Oh, gate. Gate. Not so sure about that one. Did it only click because I fell off? Who knows? So that is how I pick them. This is actually not a very easy pick, but um, once you think you've got them all in the gate, I don't know where this one needs rotating on the uh, on the top, but because we're tensioning off of the top disc, it doesn't mean it's going to be zero. So if you get it in, you think you've got everything in the gate where it should be. Just try and pick one up that's zero cut, or you think zero cut. Actually, that one didn't actually feel very wide. Feels a bit wider now. I'm sure that was zero cut. So we're just gonna turn that a little bit. And if that pops open, it's right. If it isn't, it's not. And it's clearly not. <laughs> oh, it's making me handache. I think this is the longest video in history. Nobody's gonna watch all this. <laughs> I mean, I have picked this, I think it took me three or four minutes when I wasn't chatting to, to, to open this, but Now I want to open it because it's annoying me. No, that's definitely a zero cut. It's not doing anything. Quite often when you've rotated a pass and you rotate them back, you can just feel a little tiny bit of movement on the, uh, on the tensioner. Aching. Can't 
Billy Pickett now. One of the hardest things is to keep the damn um, pin pick tip on the discs because you got to remember is your pick tip um, on this sparrows is on it was it six mil your disc is about one and a half mil 1.6 so you haven't got a lot to play with and if you don't get it in the middle of the disc it falls off but um i don't know why this isn't picked to be honest with you <laughs> should have been by now uh, so i think it just fell off there did i or did they open it? I don't know. Oh, I give up. My hands aching. I've been holding it too long. Um, yeah, so that's basically a not to pick a distainer lock. <laughs> but I hope it's given you a few pointers on how they work. Um, definitely, if you're really new to it, you know, stay away from the locks from the pound shop or the dollar store because they're just terrible locks like this are good um if not a little bit difficult but at least you get some feedback with them. Um, also your kryptonites stuff like that there's no false gates so, you know nothing difficult in there it's just recognizing when they go in a gate anyway guys if you've stayed to the end of this you deserve a bloody medal <laughs> thanks for watching